Now, magicians, as I've learned during these past weeks, are often a bit like their tricks. Deceptive. Not always what they seem. For instance, in all the years our next guest was earning a living, shinning up pylons and repairing power lines, he was also perfecting his style of magic. And that has now earned him descriptions like the most original magician in the world. He brings a whole new approach to the science of illusion, as we're about to see. Please welcome Jerry Andrews. I would like to show you what I call a perfect illusion. It's this yellow spot on this sheet of plastic. Now, it isn't literally perfect, but I call it the illusion of the yellow ball. Doesn't that just look solid? <laughs> Did you drop it in the phone for me? Now, you will all recall, remember, first it was flat like that. First it was flat, and then it was the illusion. There it is, of the yellow ball. <laughs> Watch the illusion of the yellow ball. Let me explain what happens. You see it forms, I form it into a cone around my left index finger like this. Now, it is empty. The only thing I have to be careful about, if that hole gets too large, obviously the ball could get out. <laughs> I'm going to roll this into a tube instead of a cone. And you can see that the ball is still in there. Now, if I put one hand over each end of this tube, we all know it is literally impossible for that ball to get out. And this it is indeed, flat like that. Let me explain what happens. I form this into a cone like this, and we have the perfect illusion of the yellow ball. <laughs> you know, when I was trying to figure out some method of vanishing a rubber ball, I thought of having it go up my left sleeve like that. Well, obviously, that isn't very practical. I discovered a very simple way to vanish a rubber ball. I discovered zone zero. No one ever thought of it before. I brought it here to show you. This is zone zero. And whatever goes through that hole into zone zero, it instantly vanishes. Whatever goes through the hole into zone zero, it instantly vanishes. Now, the beautiful part of it, it's sort of like a functional black hole, because I can reach right in there and retrieve it. <laughs> now, I did research on this, and I discovered the ball doesn't actually vanish when it goes through the hole. It's when I take my hand out that it's gone. I'm talking about totally, completely. Absolutely gone, but always instantly retrieved. <laughs> One of the reasons I'm interested in magic is I'm very interested in this wonderful human mind we have. I think a human being is the most incredibly wonderful thing that I know of that exists in the universe that I've seen. And usually when we're fooled, our mind has worked the way it should and we've come to the proper conclusion. I have here a drawing of an automobile. It's on a flat sheet and the, the wheel is clear over here. You wouldn't think that a human mind could take that wheel and move it so it looks like on the front of the vehicle. But if I take this little piece here that represents the top of the car, and if I lay it on this flat sheet, now immediately your wonderful mind will make that into a three-dimensional object. And now if I turn it like this, now the wheel looks like it's in the proper place, although you see the wheel. <laughs> see, this wonderful mind takes this flat thing and the instant that I put this down, then you see again the little three-dimensional automobile. Thank you very much. I have a sort of a modernistic sculpture here. It represents two large brass nuts. Now, they, they're swinging here, and they may look like they're moving independently, but actually they aren't. But it's a strange thing, because if I put my arm through here, it will look like it has to go around the corner to go through the other nut. <laughs> See, if I put my arm through here, it looks like it goes around the corner to go through the other. Actually, your wonderful mind has taken these things and turned them around, and you're actually seeing the inside of the thing 
but the minute I turn it around here now again, it will look like two large brass nuts. Thank you very much. Jerry, what, uh, what amazes me is that you don't get these things out of a book. You get them out of here, don't you? You invent these. Yes. Uh, I've, I've been lucky enough. I've come up with some things that some of the people in the field of psychology and what hadn't thought of before. I'm going to spin this disc and have you watch it for 20 seconds and then look at these clouds in this cloud picture here. Now, this is just a colored picture of clouds. It, it has no motion in it at all. But when we switch to it, you will see the clouds looking like they're boiling. I'll give this a spin. I want you to keep staring right at the center. Keep staring right at the center of the trizonal spacewalker. Now we'll switch to the cloud picture, and you'll notice that the clouds look like they're boiling. I'm going to spin it the other direction, and I want you to watch it for 20 seconds. And when we tell you to look away, I want you to look at the back of your hand. Keep staring right at the center. Now look at the back of your hand. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a little bit of, of how this wonderful mind of ours works. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.